Tema saat ini adalah jangan takut. The theme for today's sharing is do not fear, fear not. Siapa di sini yang tidak pernah takut? Who in here has not ever been afraid? <coughs> ya, yeah. ada enggak? Any of us, any of you, not been afraid? Hmm? Oke, okay. ya. Yeah. Firman Tuhan mengenai janganlah takut. The word of God regarding fear not. Itu disebutkan di Alkitab itu katanya 365 kali. It's mentioned 365 times in the Bible. Jadi itu diberikan sekarang itu adalah kalau 365 itu berarti satu hari sekali. So if there's 365 times mentioned in the Bible, it means that there's one for each day. Tahu nggak kenapa? Do you know why? Kenapa begitu sering Tuhan sebutkan jangan takut? Do you know why God oftentimes says fear not? Apakah karena di, di sekeliling kita banyak musuh gitu? Is it because there is a lot of enemies surrounding us? Atau yang serem-serem? Oh, there's many scary things surround us? Apakah yang begitu? Is it because of that? Bukan. No. Terus kenapa? Then why? <laughs> <coughs> karena, ya. 365 hari, tiap hari Tuhan memberkati. Because 365 times every single day God blesses us. Pada waktu Tuhan berkata, datanglah kerajaanmu. When God says, let, let your kingdom come. Kerajaan surga sudah datang untuk kamu. The kingdom of heaven has come for you. Dan kalau kamu keliling Jakarta, and when you go around Jakarta, itu kerajaan surga lebih besar dari itu. The kingdom of heaven is greater than that. Kalau kamu keliling Indonesia, when you go around Indonesia, itu kerajaan surga lebih besar dari itu. The kingdom of heaven is greater than that. Dan kalau kamu keliling dunia, and when you go around the world, ya, kerajaan surga lebih besar daripada itu. The kingdom of heaven is still greater than that. Dan itulah yang Tuhan bilang, datanglah kerajaanmu. And that is what God says, let your kingdom come. Dan itu yang Tuhan berikan kepada kita. And that is what God has given us. Begitu besar. So great. Dan yang Tuhan berikan adalah waktu kita diberikan sesuatu yang besar seperti itu. And God says when we are given something that so great is that. Tiap hari. Every single day. Itu adalah yang kalau kita diberikan jadi seperti itu, misalnya itu adalah suatu hal yang baru. That means it is a new thing. Ya. Jadi kalau misalnya orang yang tadinya belum punya rumah sekarang punya rumah. Let's say the person doesn't have a home before, a house before, but now he has a house. Rumah itu adalah bagian dari kerajaan surga. The house is part of the kingdom of God. Dan rumah itu adalah orang itu pertama kali itu adalah suatu yang baru. And for that person, um, the first time the house will be a new thing for him. Dan hal-hal yang baru. And new things. Hal-hal yang belum pernah kamu alami. You think that you have not experienced yet? Itu seringkali menakutkan. Oftentimes it is scary. Benar nggak? Isn't that right? Siapa dulu inget ya? Atau yang punya anak tahu ya? Waktu anaknya pertama atau you sendiri waktu you pertama kali masuk SD takut nggak? Do you remember when your child or even yourself when you first um, at your first day of school wasn't that scary? Waktu you pertama kali masuk ke SMP, you takut gak? When you first entered middle high, wasn't that scary for you? Waktu you masuk SMA, takut gak? When you first time you went to senior high, was that scary for you? Begitu takutnya sampai cari temen yang pinter sebelahnya duduk sebelah supaya bisa nyontek, bener gak? It's so scary that you have to find a friend that is so smart so you can cheat. Bener gak? Isn't that right? Eh, aku loh. Uh. Admit it. Bener gak? Oh, begitu, begitu takutnya sampai cari teman. Ini siapa yang pintar? Kita duduk sebelah aja. It's that scary enough that we have to find a friend that's smart. Ya, atau di belakangnya supaya bisa nyontek. Uh, or someone that sits behind us so we can cheat. Itulah ya. Dan pada waktu you masuk ke universitas takut gak? And when you first entered uni, wasn't it scary for you? Pada waktu itu dokter takut gak? The first time you came a doctor, wasn't it scary? Mana si Hakri? Pernah kali ke Jakarta, dia takut gak tuh? <laughs> yeah, it's for Hakri. First time he went to Jakarta, isn't that scary for him? Bener gak? Atau kayak ibu Lina, Lina, waktu anaknya ke Jogja, takut gak, Lin? Or Tante Lina, first time the child goes to Jogja, isn't that scary Padahal kan di sekolah di Gama kan suatu bagian hidup yang indah tau. When uni is actually a beautiful part in life. Nyesel gak? 
Enggak tuh. You didn't regret it, right? Tapi waktu anak you pergi sana takut enggak? But when your child had to move there, it wasn't it scary for you? Nanti enggak. Karena kerajaan surga itu hal yang baru bagi kami, yang lebih baik. Because the kingdom of heaven is a new thing for us, which is a better thing for us. Yang tapi hal yang baru itu pertama kali menakutkan. But new things are oftentimes. Karena kita sudah biasanya tempat yang kita sudah biasa, kita enggak takut. Because in a place that is familiar, we won't be afraid in it. Tapi kalau you bayangin kalau hidup you, you cuma SMP tok, enggak pernah SMA. You mau enggak? But imagine that your whole life you're just staying in middle high and you don't go to senior high. Kalau you hidup you cuma di misalnya cuma di cuma di satu kota aja enggak pernah lihat dunia yang lain, enggak pernah ke Bali, enggak pernah ke Bandung. Senang kok. You itu kayak hidup yang baik apa enggak? And if you're alive, though, you, throughout your whole life, you only stay in one place, in one city. You don't travel to Bali or another place. Is that is that an enjoyful, uh, enjoying, enjoyable life? Yeah. Jadi, ya kalau you kerja you cuma masuk jabatannya, misalnya apa ya, uh, staff atau apa ya, kepala bagian gitu ya, masuk pertama kali lah. When you first um, start working, your position is as a staff. Ya, dan seumur hidup di situ enggak pernah naik pangkat. Itu bagus semua enggak? And throughout your whole life you just stay in that position, you don't um, get promoted. Is that a good thing? Yang bagus mah dia naik promosi dong. Uh, the good thing is that we get promoted, right? Mungkin jadi manager. Maybe become a manager. Dan tapi waktu jadi manager, mana hal baru? Biasanya takut. But when you first become a manager, it's a new thing, you would be scared. Nanti jadi manager jadi direktur. And after being become manager, you become a director. Takut lagi. You become fearful again. Karena uh, kita kayak gak bisa. Because you feel that you're not capable. Tapi kalau itu, kalau cuma mentok di bawah terus, apa itu kerajaan surga kan bukan? But if you just stay at the bottom, is that the kingdom of heaven? No, it's not. Ya, jadi Tuhan berikan tiga jangan takut 365 kali atau sering kali dikatakan di Bible. Itu adalah karena Dia memberkati kamu dengan hidup yang baru yang lebih baik. That's why God says uh, fear not 365 times in the Bible because every single day He blesses us with new and greater things. Dan pada waktu jadi jadi Dia memberikan hidup yang lebih baru yang lebih bagus dan pada waktu itu jangan takut. He gives us a new life, a better life, and that, which is why He says do not fear. Ya, yeah, makanya yang mau kawin jangan bertar ya. Gak apa apa. For those that wants to enter into marriage, do not fear. You know. Komputer, terlalu banyak nonton film, jadinya takut, gitu loh. You're nervous, you're watching TV too much, do not fear. Gak apa-apa, kalau itu hidup yang baru, orang yang keluarga akan lebih happy. With the new life, new family, the family will be happy for you. Ya, itu yang Tuhan berikan, dia karena dia berikan lahir baru, hidup yang baru. Because God always gives us a new thing, a new life. Dan karena kerajaannya begitu besar, tiap hari kamu ditambahin. And because his kingdom is so great, every single day he adds on to it. Dan sampai berapa lama pun kerajaan yang dia Tuhan berikan itu begitu besar. Karena kerajaan surga begitu besar. And every single day until forevermore, what he gives us is so great because the kingdom of heaven is so great. Dia ingin memberikan pembawa hidupmu lebih lebih tinggi, lebih tinggi dan lebih sukses dan lebih sukses seperti itu. He wants to bring our lives higher and higher and more successful and more successful. Dan hal-hal yang baru dan pada waktu pada hal yang baru adalah wajar untuk orang takut. And for new thing or new face, it's it's um it's okay for us to be afraid. Tapi Tuhan pengasihmu. But God loves you. Karena itu Tuhan mengatakan jangan takut 365 kali di Alkitab. Which is why God says to us fear not 365 times in the Bible. Setiap hari diingetin. Every single day he reminds us. Jangan takut. Fear not. Kalau jalan macet jangan takut. If you're in a traffic jam, fear not. Ya, yeah. kalau ada bosnya galak sedikit jangan takut. If you have a furious boss, do not fear. Ya, yeah. itu maksudnya. That's what he means. Ya, jadi di Daniel 7 Tuhan memperlihatkan kepada Daniel. Tuhan memperlihatkan ya binatang-binatang besar empat ekor. So in Daniel 7 God gave a vision to Daniel. Um, there are four beasts. Yang dikatakan juga ialah empat raja di Daniel 7 ayat 17. Which were also mentioned as four kings. Binatang-binatang besar yang empat ekor itu ialah empat raja. 
Do you know seven verse seventeen? These great beasts, which are four in number, are four kings. Jadi hal-hal yang menakut menakutkan kamu itu akan menjadi seperti raja untuk hidupmu. So the things that are scary in your life, they will become like kings in your life. Kenapa? Karena yang menakutkan kita akan mengintimidasi dan berkuasa atas kamu. Because what you fear will intimidate you and rule you. Benar gak? Isn't that right? Coba orang ya, misalnya yang Tony happy sekali. Imagine Om Tony very happy. Ya, tapi kemudian dia takutan karena sesuatu, dia mungkin lupa apa. But then he becomes fearful or scared because maybe he forgot something. Langsung sukacitanya hilang semua tuh. And his joy will disappear, right? Itu loh. Jadi hal-hal yang menakutkan kamu, makanya dikatakan seperti binatang yang besar yang menyeramkan adalah seperti raja yang berkuasa atas kamu. So things that make you fearful are like kings uh, yeah. in your life. Dan akan mengambil sukacitamu. And will uh, steal your joy away. Ya. Yeah. Dan ini yang terjadi di Daniel. Pada waktu Daniel melihat penglihatan dari Tuhan, ya, Daniel 7 ayat 15, maka aku Daniel terharu karena hal itu dan penglihatan-penglihatan bulan itu menggelisahkan aku. Verse 15, as for me, Daniel, my spirit was distressed within me, and the visions in my mind kept alarming me. Karena yang menakutkan kamu akan membuat kau gelisah. Because what you fear will make you become anxious. Hal-hal baru akan membuat bisa membuat kamu menjadi takut dan gelisah. New things can make you become fearful or anxious. Ya. Yeah. Dan Tuhan memberikan penglihatan itu kepada Daniel. And God gave the vision to Daniel. Bukan karena Tuhan ingin membuat Daniel takut. Not because he wants to make Daniel become afraid. Ya. Yeah. Tidak pernah ya Tuhan membuat orang jadi takut. Never uh, at all God wants to make us scared. Ya. Yeah. Dan apa yang kemudian Daniel lihat? And what did Daniel see then? Ya, di Daniel 7 ayat 9, sementara aku terus melihat tahta-tahta diletakkan, lalu duduklah yang lanjut usianya, pakaiannya putih seperti salju, ya. Dan rambutnya bersih seperti bulu domba, kursinya danya, dari nyala api dengan roda-roda dari api yang berkobar-kobar. Daniel 7 verse 9 I kept looking until thrones were set up and the ancient of days took his seat his vesture was like white snow and the hair of his head like pure wool his throne was ablaze with flames its wheels were a burning fire Ya jadi tu, Tuhan memperlihatkan kepada Daniel mengingatkan Daniel ya ada hal-hal yang menakutkan kamu tapi Tuhan tetap Tuhan God was showing to Daniel, God was reminding Daniel that yes, there are scary things around you, but I am still here. Dan Tuhan selalu menyertai kita. And that he's always with us. Ya. Yeah. Dan kemudian yang lanjutnya kita lihat ya di Daniel 7 ayat 11. Aku terus melihatnya karena perkataan sombong yang diucapkan tanduk itu. Aku terus melihatnya sampai binatang itu dibunuh, tubuhnya dibinasakan dan diserahkan ke dalam api yang membakar. Juga kekuasaan binatang-binatang yang lain Dicabut dan jangka hidup mereka ditemukan sampai pada waktu dan saatnya. And verse 11. Then I kept looking because of the sound of the boastful words which the horn was speaking. I kept looking until the beast was slain and its body was destroyed and given to the burning fire. As for the rest of the beasts, their dominion was taken away, but an extension of life was granted to them for an appointed period of time. Ya, dari dari empat binatang itu. Out of all the four um, beasts. Yang satu itu sudah dibunuh. One of them has been killed. Number empat, binatang nomor empat. Number four was yeah, already saya akan terlalu slain. Bukas, tapi itu binatang nomor empat. Number four was already slain. Yeah, binatang nomor empat itu adalah mempunyai sepuluh tanduk. The beast number four had four, uh, had ten horns. Yeah, binatang nomor empat itu, ya, yeah, itu mewakili sepuluh tanduk itu sepuluh hukum ya. The ten horns represented the ten laws. Yeah. Kemarin. Jadi binatang nomor empat itu mewakili ke, apa, kematian kekal. It represented eternal death. Kematian yang kekal. Uh, death that is eternal. Karena ya melanggar hukum Taurat. Because of um, trespassing the law. Ya makanya ada sepuluh tanduk di di kepala binatang nomor empat. Which is why there is a beast which had ten horns. Dan kita orang percaya. 
And we believers tidak akan ketemu binatang nomor 4 lagi. We will not meet beast number 4. Karena sudah dibunuh. Because it has been slain. Artinya, bagi orang percaya, kematian kekal tidak pernah kamu ketemui lagi dalam hidupmu. Which means for us believers, we will not ever meet eternal death anymore. Dan di dalam hidupmu, hukum Taurat sudah tidak ada lagi karena diganti dengan hukum kasih karunia. And in your life, um, the law will not take over you anymore because you are now under grace. Ya. Yeah. Dan juga ada tanduk kecil di 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 di, di binatang nomor uh, yang nomor empat tadi. And there was a small horn in beast number four. Itu adalah wujud dari antikristus. That is the form of antichrist. Yang besar ya, jadi iblis yang uh, antikristus ya. Which is a great uh, devil. Beast. Dan itu juga kamu tidak akan pernah ketemu hadapi karena sudah dihilangkan dalam hidupmu. And this uh, antichrist as well, we will not ever meet because it has been killed. Killed. Nanti ya. Jadi itu semua tidak akan pernah temui. So you understand we will not ever meet those two again. Ya. Tapi ada tiga binatang lain. But then there are three other beasts. Ya. Binatang yang pertama. The first beast. Ada disebutkan di Alkitab itu seperti singa. It's um the Bible says that it's like a lion. Yang punya sayap. That has wings. Tapi sayapnya dicabut. But then the wings have been taken away. Jadi dia jatuh. So he falls. Dan kepada dan binatang pertama itu diberikan hati seperti manusia. And to that first beast, it was given a heart like mankind. Dan berdiri seperti manusia. And it stood like man. Ya tahu hati binatang pertama itu apa? Do you know what the first beast is? Fallen man, orang yang jatuh. It's fallen man. Ya, hatinya seperti manusia. The heart is like man. Berdiri. It stand. Tapi tadinya punya sayap, terus sayapnya cabut, pas dia jatuh. But it, first it It used to have wings, but the wings was taken away, so it fell. Ya, yang kedua itu adalah seperti beruang makan daging. And the second beast is like a bear eating flesh. Itu nabi palsu. Those are false prophets. Sukanya makan orang. They like to eat other. Sukanya mendapatkan keuntungan dari orang lain. They like to get benefits out of other people. Yang keempat adalah binatang yang seperti leper, seperti apa tu macam tutul. And the the third, yeah, the third is. Mas yang ketiga. Yeah, the third is like a leper. Kepalanya empat dan sayapnya empat. It has four heads and four wings. Itu adalah agama bi, keempat penjuru dunia. Those were, uh, those are religious people. Right? Yang selalu tiga hal tadi. So those three beasts. In the Bible, selalu menghadapi tiga hal tadi. The Bible always faces those three beasts. Diri sendiri, orang. Uh, own self, people. Nabi palsu. False prophets. Dan agama bi. And religious people. Ya, yeah. disebutkan yang di sini di ayat dua belas. Kuasa dari binatang-binatang yang tiga itu sudah dicabut. It says in verse 12 that the, their dominion was taken away. Tapi kamu tetap ketemu karena disebutkan dan jangka hidup mereka ditentukan sampai pada waktu dan saatnya. Kita tetap ketemu, tapi yang kita ketemukan tidak punya kuasa. But we still face them because it says that an extension of life was granted to them for a point of period of time. So we still meet them, but they don't have any power. Jadi kita lihat ya di empat binatang tadi yang menakutkan Daniel menangkan manusia itu semuanya sudah tidak punya kuasa. So we see out of those the four beasts that Daniel saw, all of them have no power at all. Ini kehendak Tuhan supaya kita jangan takut. This is God's will, so we do not become fearful. Ngerti kan? Do you understand that? Karena yang kau hadapi sudah tidak punya kuasa. Because what we face no longer has dominion over us. Itu, ya. Jadi ada ada Tuhan. And there's God. Karena kalau kita takut. Because when if we become afraid. Yang kita takutkan itu akan menjadi seperti raja dalam hidup kita. What we fear will become king over our lives. Dan kita akan dikuasai. And we'll, we will become controlled by it. Dan kita akan melanggar. Kalau dari dari hukum Taurat tu, yang pertama, yaitu perintah pertama dari sepuluh hukum, jangan ada padamu Allah lain di hadapanku. And we will um, not abide with the with the commandment of you shall not have no other gods before me. Karena Tuhan adalah Dia satu-satunya Tuhan. God's will is for Him to become the one and only God. Karena itu Tuhan jangan takut. Which is why He says fear not. Karena pada waktu kita takut, kita akan tidak secara tidak sadar kita menyembah sesuatu yang lain. Because when when we become fearful, we don't realize that we are actually 
worshiping another god. Oke. Okay. Dan kita lihat di Daniel lanjutannya. Di Daniel 7 ayat 16 dikatakan lalu ku dekati salah seorang dari mereka yang berdiri sana dan ku minta penjelasan tentang semuanya itu. And in verse 16 Daniel says, I, I approached one of those who were standing by and began asking him the exact meaning of all this. Jadi Tuhan mengirimkan dirinya sendiri atau malaikat kita tidak tahu untuk menjelaskan dan menguatkan Daniel. So God sent himself or maybe the angels, it didn't say, um, to explain to Daniel. Ya, supaya Daniel jangan takut. So Daniel will not, will not be afraid. Ya, dan itulah wujud Tuhan. And that is the form of God. Yang mengasihi kita. That loves us. Pertama, dia kasih tahu apa hal-hal apa yang bisa menakutkan kita. First of all, he will show us the things that will make us be comfortable. Supaya kita sadar. So we become conscious. Yang kedua, ke- 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 hal tadi sebetulnya kuasanya sudah dicabut semua sama dia. And second thing, that all of those things that makes us fearful, actually they have no more power. Their dominion has been taken away. Dan dia selalu menyertai kita. And he's always with us. Ya, jadi itulah wujud dari kasihnya. So that is the form of his love. Supaya kita jangan takut. So that we will not be afraid. Supaya kita jangan menyembah yang kita takuti. So we do not worship things that make Sup- us fearful. Supaya kita tidak menterimiti terintimidasi oleh yang kita takuti. So we are no longer become intimidated by the things that makes us fearful. Dan supaya tidak ada ilah lain di hidup kita. And so that there will be no other gods in our life. Ya. Yeah? Jadi di dalam hidup kita Mungkin bertemu dengan sesuatu yang menakutkan kita, tapi Tuhan tetap ada bersama kita. So in life we may face things that scares us, but God is always there with us. Dan Tuhan tidak ingin sesuatu yang menakutkan kita itu berkuasa atas kita dan mengambil sukacita kita. And God doesn't want the things that scares us to rule over us and take away our joy. Tuhan ingin kita melihat kasihnya, melihat Dia. God wants us to see His love, to see Him. Dan Dia tetap adalah Tuhan yang maha kuasa. And He is still the God that is great. Ya, dan kita akan akhirnya kita akan melihat bahwa memang begitu Tuhan yang maha kuasa yang menakutkan kita itu sebetulnya enggak ada papanya. And we will see eventually that the things that we were scared of have nothing are powerless uh, before God. Inilah ya yang Tuhan berikan. This is what God has given. Karena Tuhan mengasihimu. Because God loves you. Dan pada waktu Tuhan mengasihimu, Dia akan membawa kamu ke tempat yang lebih baik, lebih tinggi dan macam-macam. And when God loves you, he will, he will bring you to new places, to higher places. Semua yang dia, dia janjikan. To things that he has promised before. Mungkin karir baru. Maybe a new career. Mungkin kota baru. Maybe a new city. Mungkin uh, hidup baru. Maybe a new life. Ya, mungkin kamu suami istri. Maybe your husband and wife. Atau mungkin punya anak. Maybe you're going to have a child. Kau akan diberikan sesuatu yang lebih baru terus. You're going to always be given new things all the time. Itulah wujud dari kerajaan surga bagimu. That is the form of the kingdom of heaven for you. Kerajaan surga itu begitu besar. The kingdom of heaven so great. Bukan hanya materi. It's not just material things. Bukan hanya dari kota satu ke kota lain. It's not just from one city to another city. Tapi dalam hidupmu. But in your life. Kamu akan dibawa terus. You will be brought to. Ya, kamu dikasih teman baru. You will be given new friends. Dan seterusnya, kalau diberikan karir baru, new career, kamu diberikan suatu pengalaman mungkin main musik lagu yang baru dan seterusnya. You be given new experience, new um, songs. Karena itulah wujud dari kerajaan surga yang begitu besar. That's the form of the kingdom of heaven that dan is so big. Milikmu. And that is yours. Dan kamu akan jalani itu. And you will uh, walk through it. Ya. Dan kamu akan berbahagia. And you will become happy. Ya. Ini yang yang terjadi di Israel. This is what happens in Israel. Tuhan sudah menjanjikan dan sudah membawa Israel ke tanah perjanjian. God has brought the Israelites to the promised land. Dan di dalam tanah perjanjian itu, Tuhan sudah bilang ini tanah yang dipenuhi dengan susu dan madu yang sangat diberkati. And in this promised land, God has said that this is the land that is filled with honey and milk that is so blessed. Dan Israel sudah di Udah, apa sebentar lagi itu udah udah dekat sekali gitu loh. And the Israelites were very close to it. Ya, untuk dapat ke tanah perjanjian, to, tanah yang yang diberkati. To get the promised land or the blessed land. Apa yang terjadi? What happened then? You tahu lah ceritanya. You, I'm sure you know the story. Ya, yang terjadi adalah Israel 
mengirimkan 12 mata-mata untuk melihat tanah itu. The Israelites they sent 10 spies to see the land. Ya. Dan 10 mata-mata and the 10 spies itu berkata they said di bilangan 13 ayat 32 dan 33 kita baca ya supaya kita ngerti. Juga mereka menyampaikan kepada orang Israel kabar busuk tentang negeri yang diintai mereka. Dengan berkata, negeri yang telah kami lalui untuk diintai adalah suatu negeri yang memakan penduduknya. Dan semua orang yang kami lihat di sana adalah orang-orang yang tinggi-tinggi perawakannya. Juga kami lihat di, atas, di sana orang-orang raksasa, orang enak yang berasal dari orang-orang raksasa. Dan kami lihat diri kami seperti belalang dan demikian juga mereka dalam kami. Numbers 13, verse 32. So they gave out to the sons of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone is spying it out. It's a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great size. There are there also we saw the Nephilim. The sons of Anak are part of the Nephilim. And we became like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. Yeah, jadi seperti itu, takut. And so it's like that. They were scared. Yeah. Israel dan 10 mata-mata itu terintimidasi. The Israelites and the 10 spies, they were intimidated. Dan karena itu mereka kehilangan. And which is why they were at loss. Berkat dari tanah perjanjian. They lost the blessings of the promised land. Karena hal kecil ya. Just because of a small thing. Mereka tidak takut. They were just scared. Mereka tidak bisa masuk. They cannot enter. Mereka jadi masuk ke situ dan dan kehilangan berkat dari tanah perjanjian. You cannot enter and then they lost the blessings of the promised land. Ya, itu, you tahu nggak? Israel itu melihat dirinya kecil. The Israelites they see themselves as very small. Itu kayak the first beast, fallen man, manusia yang gagal. It's like the first beast, the fallen man. Ya. Yang kedua itu mata-mata itu menjadi seperti nabi palsu yang ngomongin kamu tuh kecil kamu kecil kamu begitu. And the ten spies were like uh, false prophets. They were saying that oh you're small you're small you have nothing against them. Dan mereka itu mereka menjadi takut. Which is why the Israel became. Dan mereka afraid. tidak bisa mendapatkan berkat dari tanah perjanjian yang di depan mata yang sudah dijanjikan Tuhan. Which resulted them to not be able to um, get the promised land and they cannot um, obtain the blessings that God has promised. Ya, yeah. kemudian apa yang terjadi? And then what had happened? Ya, di bilangan 14 dan 40. Dan keesokan harinya bangunlah mereka pagi-pagi hendak naik ke puncak gunung sampai berkata sekarang kita ada maju ke negeri yang difirmankan Tuhan itu. Memang kita telah berbuat dosa. Meskipun dipikir mereka nekat naik ke puncak gunung itu, tapi tahu perjanjian Tuhan dan Musa juga tidaklah meninggalkan tempat perkembangan. Lalu turunlah orang-orang Amalek dan orang Kanaan yang mendiami pegunungan itu dan menyerang mereka. Kemudian orang itu menyerahkan mereka sampai ke hormat. Number 13 verse 40. In the morning, however, they rose up early and went up to the ridge of the hill country, saying, Here we are, we have indeed sinned, but we will go up to the place which the Lord has promised. But they went up heedlessly to the ridge of the hill country. Neither the ark of the covenant of the Lord nor Moses left the camp. Then the um, Amalekites and the Canaanites who lived in that hill country came down and struck them and beat them down as far as Hormah. Tangga. Yang ketiga adalah orang Israel yang lakukan setelah itu adalah binatang yang ketiga. Do you know what the uh, what the Israelites did was uh, uh, the third beast? Men, yaitu agamawi. Which is religious people. Yaitu ingin men men mencapai kehendak Tuhan dengan cara sendiri. They wanted to achieve God's will, but with their own effort. And gagal total. No? And they failed. Ilet ya binatang pertama, binatang kedua, binatang ketiga. You see the first and second, third beast. Ya, semuanya karena itu jadi akhirnya gagal, tidak dapat sama sekali. They all failed, and which is why they didn't get the blessings. Ya, berkat dari tanah perjanjian yang sudah dijanjikan dan diberikan ke Israel, tapi mereka kehilangan berkat tersebut karena mereka melihat sesuatu yang menakutkan mereka dan tidak melihat kasih Tuhan. Sangat menyedihkan ya. The blessings of the promised land has been promised and given to Israel. Yet they missed it because they saw the things that feared them instead of the love of God, which is so sad. Tanah perjanjian itu sebetulnya tanah perjanjian tanah berkat. The promised land was actually the land full of blessings. Tapi itu juga hal yang baru. 
But it is also a new thing for them. Dan Israel takut. And the Israelites were afraid. Takut masuk. They were afraid to enter. Lihat ya. Did you see it? Dan gak dapat. And then they lost it. Bukan. Karena bukan karena Tuhan tidak memberikan, karena mereka menolak atau tidak mau menerima yang Tuhan berikan. It's not because God didn't want to give it to them, but it's because they rejected or they didn't want to receive what God was giving them. Ya, nah sekarang kita lihat ya, apa yang kita tahu ya, dua macam mata yang lain, yaitu Joshua, ya, dan Caleb, dan keturunan Israel, akhirnya masuk ke tanah perjanjian. And now we know what happens next, Joshua and Caleb, they entered the promised land. Ya, di Joshua 1 ayat 9. Joshua 1 verse 9. Kembali mau masuk ke tanah perjanjian. They try to enter the promised land. Israel yang baru keturunannya yaitu dan dipimpin oleh Yosua, bukan Musa lagi. Sekarang Yosua. The Israelites were now led by Joshua, no longer by Moses. Ya, lihat di Yosua satu ayat sembilan apa firman Tuhan. Joshua one verse nine, we see what the word of God is. Bukankah telah ku beritahkan kepadamu, kuatkan dan tekukkanlah hatimu, janganlah kecut dan tawar hati. Sebab Tuhan alamu menyertai engkau kemanapun engkau pergi. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Ya. Pesan Tuhan, jangan takut. God's message was, do not be do not be afraid. Pesan Tuhan, ketahuilah kehendaknya. Lihat dia. His message was, know his will, look to him. Bukankah telah ku perintahkan kepadamu? Have I not commanded you? Ketahuilah kendaknya. You have to know his will. Dan ingatlah bahwa Tuhan alamu menyertai engkau kemanapun engkau pergi. And remember that Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Kemanapun engkau pergi. Wherever you go. Di tempat baru manapun Tuhan memberkatimu. To any new places that God's bringing. Karena Dia mengasihimu. He is with you because He loves you. Karena Allah adalah kasih. Because God is love. Meskipun kamu di tempat yang salah, pun Allah adalah kasih. Tanpa kondisi kamu tetap diberkati. Even though you are at the wrong place, God still loves you unconditionally. Karena agama Wei selalu bilang kalau kamu di tempat benar kamu diberkati, tempatnya salah. Kamu tidak diberkati. Because religious people say that if you're in the right place, you are blessed. But if you're in the wrong place, you will not be blessed. Kata-kata seperti itu menyangkal Tuhan adalah kasih. Those words deny that God is love. Karena Tuhan adalah kasih. Tuhan adalah kasih. Tidak tergantung kamu di mana. Because God is love. God is love, no matter where you are. Bukan Tuhan hanya mengasihimu kalau kamu di sini. Kalau kamu di sana enggak. It's not a God that will love you when you're only in this place, not if you're in that place. Tapi Tuhan adalah kasih Dia memberkati kemanapun kau pergi di tempat yang baru manapun. But God is love will bless you wherever you are in any new places you will. Dia memberkatimu. God blesses you. Ya, dan itu yang Tuhan ingin supaya engkau jangan takut. And that is what God desires, so you will not be afraid. Karena di dalam hidupmu kau Tuhan akan bawa. Because in your life God will take you. Kadang-kadang ke pendidikan yang baru. Maybe sometimes to a new, a higher degree. Ya. Kadang-kadang ke hidup yang baru. Maybe to a new life. Kadang-kadang ke karya yang baru. Maybe new career. Atau usaha yang baru. Or new business. Apapun juga. Whatever it is. Tuhan membawa kamu pada waktu itu ingat ya. Jangan takut. Whenever God is bringing you, do not fear. Karena kau selalu memiliki kasih Tuhan yang sempurna. Because you always have the love of God that is perfect. Meskipun di tempat yang baru itu mungkin kamu bisa bikin salah. Karena tempat yang baru. Even though maybe in the new place you will make mistakes. Nanti tak. New place. Karena anak kalau anak yang pintar pun masuk ke sekolah yang itu kadang-kadang dia buat kesalahan di dalam ulangan. Even a smart child when he goes to a new grade, sometimes he will make mistakes. Gak apa-apa, Allah adalah kasih kau tetap diberkati. It's okay, God is love. You are still being blessed. Tidak kondisi dan apa apa pun juga. In in all conditions. Hanya bergantung sama dia. Just kasihnya. Just rely on him, his love. Ini penting ya, karena Tuhan akan bawa kamu di dalam kerajaan surga yang begitu besar dan hal-hal yang baru. Pada waktu itu kamu jangan takut. Meskipun kamu salah pun, Tuhan tetap memberkati. 
This is important because in the kingdom of heaven, God will always continue uh, bringing you to a new place. And even in the new place, do not fear when you make mistakes. Ya, lihat ya di Yosua 1 ayat 2, apa yang Tuhan katakan. Hambaku Musa telah mati, sebab itu bersiaplah sekarang. In Joshua 1 verse 2, he says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise. Artinya apa? What does this mean? Joshua menghormati Musa. Joshua respects Moses. Tapi Tuhan bilang, jangan bergantung sama orang. Hamba Musa pun sudah mati. Lupakan dia. But God says, don't depend on men. Um, my my servant Moses is already dead. Now therefore arise. Jangan ada padamu ilah lain di hadapanku. Let there no uh, there be no other gods among you. Ngerti gak? Pada waktu kau menghadapi hal-hal yang baru. When you face new things. Ya, pada waktu hal-hal yang baru. Jangan ngandalin orang lain. Do not depend on other men. Kamu minta tolong orang lain enggak apa-apa. It's okay if you ask help. Jangan taruh orang, orang lain itu sebagai Tuhanmu. But don't put place them as your God. Ya. Tapi tetap Tuhan yang sebagai Tuhanmu. Only God, let God be your God. Makanya Tuhan berkata kepada Yosua dengan keras, hambaku Musa sekalipun sudah mati, lupain. Which is why God says strongly to Joshua, Moses, my servant is dead. Forget about it. Ya, ketiga, supaya berseratus persen bergantung sama Kristus, sama Tuhan. So he can 100% rely, depend on God. Ya, kemudian lihat ya di ayat yang itu, lihat yang dia katakan. Seberangilah sungai Jordan ini. We see afterwards it says cross this Jordan River. Ya, seberangi sungai Jordan. Artinya apa? Masuk ke tempat yang baru yang kamu belum pernah. Cross this Jordan River. What does that mean? Means a new place, a place that you've never been before. Ya sudah, gitu aja masuk aja, tenang aja, udah gak apa-apa. Tetap Tuhan berkuasa di segala tempat, toh. Just enter, just uh, surrender. God is always in control and everywhere. Makanya Tuhan berkata, seberang sungai Jordan. So God says cross this Jordan. Sungai Jordan ini gak ada apa-apanya. Lewat aja. This Jordan River is nothing. Just yeah. pass it. Menuju negeri yang kuberikan kepada mereka, kepada orang Israel. To the land which I am giving to them, to the Israelites. Kepada tempat yang penuh berkat. Which is a place that's full of blessings. Itu yang Tuhan akan bawa kamu dalam hidup. And it's where God will bring you in your life. Ya, yeah. yang muda, yang tua, kamu tetap seperti itu. Kenapa? Karena kerajaan sudah begitu besar. Even the elderly, you are still going to experience this because the kingdom of heaven is so great. You tahu gak? Menurut saya. Kasih satu juta tahun pun belum habis. Uh, my opinion, even a million years, uh, his love will never end. Kerajaan suka begitu besar. The kingdom of heaven is so great. Kamu keliling dunia perlu waktu berapa? Seumur hidup? Kalau kerajaan surga, waduh, kamu gak bisa. Begitu besar yang Tuhan berikan. Maybe it'll take you your whole life to go around the world, but the kingdom of heaven is much more greater than that. Ya, karena, karena ya, saya bilang ya, Inilah ya yang Tuhan ingin bawa. Because this is where God wants to lead you. Inilah yang disebut karunia untuk memimpin. This is what's called um, the the gift to lead. Di mana Tuhan memimpinmu di dalam hidup-hidup yang baru. Where God will lead you in your new season's life. Di dalam hidup yang lebih indah dan lebih besar. To a new life, to a more better and greater life. Seperti You know, Israel is Tuhan memimpin Joshua dan Israel. Just like God leading Joshua and the Israelites. Ya. Nah, sekarang lihat ya. Berikutnya apa? Can we see what's next? Ya. Jadi pertama jangan takut. So first, do not be afraid. Kedua, jangan lihat Musa sebagai Tuhanmu. And second, don't see Moses as your God. Yang ketiga ya. Di depan Joshua satu ayat dua. Sekarang di Joshua satu ayat tiga lihat ya. Now we see Joshua one verse three. Ya, setiap tempat yang akan diinjak oleh telapak kakimu kuberikan kepada kamu seperti yang telah kujanjikan kepada Musa. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I have given it to you, just as I spoke to Moses. Ayat 4. Dari padang gurun dan gunung Lebanon yang sebelah sana itu sampai ke sungai besar yaitu Sungai Efrat, seluruh tanah Het sampai ke laut besar di sebelah mata itu benar, semuanya itu akan menjadi daerahmu. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even as far as the great river, the river of Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, as far as the great sea toward the setting of the sun, will be your territory. Ya, saya kasih tahu ya. Manusia itu waktu lahir. I tell you that when a child is born, baby pada waktu lahir, a newborn baby, otomatis waktu dia bertumbuh itu dia tuh mau jalan. Automatically when he grows, he has the urge to walk. 
Orang itu gak usah diajari, udah mau jalan. Without teaching them, they are already have desire. Orang normal tuh mau jalan. Normal people they want to walk. Ya, yeah? di mall, di mana, bener ya? Yeah, in mall or everywhere you want to walk, right? Ya nggak normal atau yang lagi sakit itu yang diem, bener nggak? People that are not normal or they're sick, they just want to stay. Kalau kamu okay. lihat orang jalan-jalan, if you see itu normal nggak? If you see a person walking, isn't that normal? Kalau kamu lihat orang di rumah sakit diem begitu, itu normal apa nggak? If you see a person um, bedridden um, in the hospital, is it, is that normal? Normal itu jalan-jalan, betul ya? Normal is walking around. Dan Tuhan berkata, setiap tempat yang kau telapak aku ikut berikan padamu. And God says, every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I have given it to you. Ini ayat ini ya di agamawi itu langsung dipraktekin di jalan itu udah benar loh. This verse for the religious people, they really practice uh, um, very literally. Ada yang keliling kota. They go around the city. Ada yang keliling apa ya? Tak tahu lah gitu ya keliling keliling gunung. I don't know. Maybe they go around the hills. They practice seperti itu. They practice. Uh, they practice it literally. Bukan, bukan itu maksudnya. But that's not what God means. Maksudnya ini begini. What God meant was. Janji Tuhan kepada kepada Yosua Israel. Ini ku berikan seluruh timur tengah untukmu. Ya apa datanya begitu besar loh dari Lebanon sampai Efrat semua itu diberikan padamu. God's promise to Joshua was that all the Middle East was given to him. Sekarang pertanyaannya. But now the question is. Seberapa besar kamu bisa menerima? How big are you willing to receive? Tahu kan? Do you understand? Tuhan memberikan kerajaannya. God has given His kingdom. Ya begitu besar. That is so great. Sekarang pertanyaannya. But now the question. Berapa kamu mau terima? How much of it are you willing to receive? Dan Joshua selama dia mau terima milikmu. And Joshua, as long as he is willing to receive it, everything will be his. Tapi pada waktu berhenti menerima, ya sudah, tak apa-apa. But when he stops walking, then that's it. Nanti kan? Do you understand it? Itu maksudnya. That's what God meant. Kerajaan surga begitu besar. Berkasih Tuhan begitu besar. The kingdom of heaven is so great. His love is so great. Tapi kamu menerimanya seberapa besar tergantung kamu. But how much are you willing to receive? That depends on you. Dia nggak paksa. He will not force it to you. Ya, di mana kamu terima itu milikmu. Wherever you receive it, it will become yours. Tapi waktu kamu bilang, eh, saya takut atau eh saya berhenti, ya udah berhenti, nggak apa-apa. But when you say, oh, I'm afraid, oh, I'll stop, then yeah, it's okay to stop. Nanti. Do you understand? Yang menyedihkan adalah orang Israel berhenti di padang gurun. What's sad is that the Israelites they stopped in the desert. Gak masuk tanah perjanjian. Nanti. They, did, they didn't enter the promised land. Bukan Tuhan yang berikan. It's not that God didn't give. Orang Israel bergantung sama bergantung sama diri sendiri dia melupakan kasih Tuhan dia berhenti di padang gurun. The Israelites they they rely on themselves they forgot God so they just stopped. Tapi Yosua bergantung sama kasih Tuhan Tuhan bilang Yosua karena kau bergantung sama Tuhan kamu mau terima seberapa besar. But Joshua he relied on God he depended on God and he was willing to enter and God said Joshua because you are willing to enter how um, how much are you willing to receive? Dan semuanya itu. And God gave everything. Saya tanya, Yosua terima semuanya nggak? Did Joshua receive it all? Nggak. No. Kebanyakan manusia berhenti di tengah jalan. Most people, most mankind, they just stop in the middle. Ya nggak apa-apa. It's okay. Nggak dikutuk, nggak dipapain. They're not being cursed. Cuma saya kasih tahu pesan Tuhan adalah tergantung kamu. Karena kasih Tuhan begitu besar. Kamu berapa besar kamu mau menerima itu kamu dapatkan. But I tell you that the message of God is that it all depends on you. How much are you willing to receive, and that uh, that is what you will get because God is giving His great love. Jadi pesan Tuhan ke Yosua adalah. So God's message to Joshua is. Terimalah sebesar mungkin dari Tuhan karena Dia adalah Tuhan yang besar dan murah hati. Just receive as much as you can because God is a generous God. Terima sebesar mungkin. Just receive, accept as much as you can. Dia lebih besar dari yang kamu bisa terima, tau nggak? He is greater than what we can all accept. And it's accept. semua untuk you, nggak ada apa-apa dari Tuhan. Semuanya untuk kamu. Everything is for you. Itu loh yang Tuhan berikan. Dimulai dengan jangan takut. That is what God is willing to give. It started off with fear not. 
Dan di Yosua 1 sampai 5 eh, ayat 5 saya lanjutkan, seorang pun tidak akan dapat bertahan menghadapi engkau seumur hidupmu. Seperti aku menyertai Musa, demikianlah aku menyertai engkau. Aku tidak akan membiarkan engkau dan tidak akan meninggalkan engkau. Joshua 1 verse 5 No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life Just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you I will not fail you or forsake you Ya, iman ayatnya berlanjutan tau, 1 verse 5 Seorang pun tidak akan dapat pertahanan menghadapi kau seumur hidup These verses were, uh, were um, yeah, It was after the verse 3 and 4 It says no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life Artinya apa? What does that mean? Artinya, gak ada yang bisa nyetop berkat Tuhan selama kamu menerima. It means that no one can stop the blessings of God unless you are willing to receive it. As Meskipun well. musuh apapun juga mau nyetop, gak bisa. Even if there are enemies that are trying to stop the blessings of God, they cannot. Gak ada yang bisa ganggu. Hanya Tuhan yang memberi dan kamu yang menerima. Yang lain tidak bisa berkuasa apapun. It's only God that will give and you are the one that's um, able to receive and nothing in between that's able to stop. Ya, makanya seorang pun tidak akan bertahan menghadapi engkau seumur hidupmu selama-lamanya. Which is why it says no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Ya, karena aku tidak akan membiarkan kau dan tidak akan meninggalkan engkau. I will not fail you nor forsake you. Ya, jadi cuma seperti itu. So it's just like that. Ya sama Tuhan itu seperti itu Dia begitu besar, dia kasih semua Mau terima, seberapa? Kayak makan buffet, nih, hmm, semua It's Ayo. like, cause God is so great Pak Atom bilang, yeah, gitu <laughs> Cause it's so great, he has given all, everything to you It's just, um, how much are you willing to receive? Just like a buffet, he's given it all Kalau dikasih makan, sini, makan, makan Di sini berhenti, sudah, gitu loh Kalau jalan terus, ya udah boleh, gak apa-apa Ada sampai es krim, sampai apa kue terus gitu loh. It's like in a buffet where you just stop in the first stall, then you'll just stop there, but then you won't get to the ice cream or other dessert. Ya, lain kali kalau pergi ke pesta kawin ingat ya, ada buffet, kamu berhenti di mana ya itu milikmu. Saat kalau kamu terusin ya boleh gitu. So when you're in a wedding and you're in a buffet, when you just stop in one place, you remind yourself, oh, only that's yours. But if you continue on, then everything else will become yours. Ya, nih lihat ya. Makanya di ayat 7, siang rasa itu Hanya, sekali lagi, Tuhan bilang Kuatkan dan teguhkanlah hatimu again, Dengan sungguh-sungguh Bertindaklah hati-hati sesuai dengan seluruh hukum yang telah diberitakan padamu oleh apapun Musa Janganlah menjimak kanan dan ke kiri Tapi supaya kau beruntung kemana pun kau pergi Once again, verse 7, God says Only be strong and very courageous Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you Do not turn from it to the right or to the left so that you may have success wherever you go. Ya, jadi kembali hanya kuatkan dan teguhkanlah hatimu. So it's repeated again. Only be strong and very courageous. Kamu bukan yang perlu berantem. You do not need to strive. Tapi kamu tetap percaya, kuatkan, jangan takut. Yeah, but you just um, need to be very strong and courageous. Tuhan memberikan kamu hidup yang baru. Kamu memberikan karir yang baru, tanggung jawab yang baru. Jangan takut. God has given a new life, a new career, um, a new place. Do not be afraid, uh, but be strong and courageous. Lihat sama dia. Look to him. Ya, dan kau akan beruntung kemanapun kau pergi. And says that you may have success wherever you go. Kau akan beruntung kemanapun kau pergi. You have success wherever you go. Ada banyak agamawi bilang, kalau kamu jalan sini doa dulu. Kalau kemari, kamu diberkati. Kalau kemari, macet, kamu masalah. Ya gitu loh firmanya. Because many religious people says if you want to enter a new place, pray first. If you go to that place, you'll be blessed. But if you go to another place, you will not be blessed. Kamu naik taksi diberkati, naik grab diberkati, naik gojek diberkati. <laughs> But I told you if you take the taxi, if you take a car, if you take grab, you will always be blessed. Jangan pikir oh tuan saya mau doa dulu ya saya mesti grab, gojek atau apa. Lo nggak gitu, tapi paling nggak ada gitu loh. But don't think that, oh, God, I have to pray first. Do I take the grab or taxi or gojek? What do I take? It's not Supaya like that. Supaya kau beruntung kemana pun kau pergi. So, so that you may have success wherever you go. Ya, yeah, sukses tuh. Bahasa Inggrisnya tuh sukses ya. Bahasa Indonesia beruntung. Gitu ya. Kita tahu gak bedanya sedikit ya. In English it's success, but in Bahasa Indonesia it says luck. <coughs> Kalau Bahasa Indonesia hoki gitu ya. Kalau Bahasa Indonesia sukses, oke okay lah. Gitu. <laughs> it's different meaning in Bahasa it's luck. Ya, yeah? yeah, lihat ya. Yeah. 
Firmannya Tuhan ya, tajam kali itu Bible. Ya. Yeah. And we see we continue on in God's word is very sharp. Ya. Yeah. Bertindaklah hati-hati sesuai dengan seluruh hukum yang telah diperintahkan kepadamu oleh hamba Musa. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Tahu 10 apa hukum yang dari Musa? You know the 10 commandments for Moses? 10 hukum? The 10 commandments? 10 perintah Allah? The 10 commandments of God? Semua perintah Allah itu cuma mengacu kepada jangan fokus pada diri sendiri, jangan bergantung pada diri sendiri. All of the Ten Commandments only focus on do not rely on yourself. Jadi, jangan ada padamu ilah lain di hadapanku. Itu artinya apa? Ilah lain. Jangan kamu bergantung sama dirimu sendiri. It says, let there be no other God among you. Uh, it means that do not rely on yourself. Jangan membuat patung seperti ada yang di uh, di atas bumi, di bumi, dan di bawah bumi. Coba, yang di bumi siapa? Jangan menyembah dirimu. Do not have any idols in heaven or on earth. It means that do not worship yourself. Jangan menyebut nama Tuhan Allahmu dengan sia-sia. Um, do not call upon the name of God in vain. Siapa yang menyebut nama Tuhan Allah dengan sia-sia? Who call the name of God in vain? Yang menyebut nama Tuhan Allah untuk kepentingan diri sendiri, benar gak? Untuk uang atau apapun juga atau jabatan, benar gak? Those who call upon God's name for their own self, which is um, maybe for money or for um, a title. Berita keempat, kuduskanlah hari Sabat. Ya tahu dan ingatlah akan dia, betul? And the fourth commandment, um, make uh, the Sabbath day holy. Ya, siapa yang yang melupakan dari Sabbat melupakan dia adalah yang fokus pada diri sendiri atau bergantung pada diri sendiri. Those who forget the Sabbath day or forget God are those that focus on themselves. Jangan apa hormati orang tuamu. Respect right? your parents. Siapa yang tidak menghormati orang tua yang fokus pada diri sendiri. Who who doesn't respect your parents are those that focus on themselves. Jangan membunuh, jangan mencuri dan seterusnya. Siapa yang membunuh, mencuri, bersaksi dosa, berzina, siapa? Yang fokus pada diri sendiri, yang bergantung pada diri sendiri. Do not kill, do not steal, um, do not deceive. Uh, who are people that do those things? They, those are people that focus on themselves. Dan itu yang Tuhan bilang. Hanya kuatkan dan tegukkanlah hatimu dengan sungguh-sungguh. And that is what God says. says only be strong and very courageous. Ya, yeah? dengan sungguh-sungguh. Kuatkan dan tegukkan hatimu. Dalam bidang apa? Dalam bidang, jangan kamu ke kiri dan ke kanan mengikuti dirimu sendiri. Just be strong and courageous. In what way? In ways that you do not turn to the right or the left. Bertindaklah hati-hati sesuai dengan seluruh hukum yang telah kuperintahkan kepadamu oleh hamba Musa. Yaitu sure. jangan bergantung pada diri sendiri. Jangan ke sana. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Uh, which means that do not focus on yourself. Jadi yang Tuhan kendaki adalah di waktu Dia membawa kamu dalam hidup baru tiap hari sebetulnya. Uh, when God takes you to new places, which is every day actually. Itu adalah kuatkan dan tegukkanlah hatimu. His promise is, His message is to only be strong and courageous. Tanda artinya apa? Berdirilah teguh di dalam kasih Tuhan. Itu aja. What does that mean? It means just stand firm in the love of God. Tidak usah berantem sama musuhmu. Musuhmu akan habis sendiri sama Tuhan. Don't Tuhan yang menyingkirkan. Don't fight or struggle with your enemy. Um, that's not your problem. God will take care of it. Musuhmu tidak akan bisa menyetop berkat Tuhan kepadamu. Your enemies will cannot stop God's blessings for you. Dan apapun yang menakutkan kau, tidak ada kuasanya di hadapan Tuhan. And all the things that scares you have no power or control in before God. Yang kamu yang Tuhan minta adalah kamu berdiri teguh, tetap tetap bergantung sama kasih Tuhan, jangan bergantung sama diri sendiri atau orang lain. What God asks of you is just to stand firm in the love of God and don't depend on your right or left or to other people. Ya, seperti itu. It's just like that. Itu namanya iman. That's what's called faith. Itu namanya hidup oleh Roh Kudus. That's what's uh, living by, uh, by the Holy Spirit. Ya, begitu. Cuma begitu gampang. That's it's just like that. It's very easy. Ya, ya. Jadi ya, ketakutan menghalangi Israel untuk menerima berkat dari tanah perjanjian. Fear prevented Israel from receiving the blessings of the promised land. Ketegangan pada diri sendiri karena Israel coba untuk mendapatkan dengan perang gagal. The dependence on self-efforts because Israel tried to attain it by their own effort did not succeed. Pakai firman Tuhan lagi. They used the word of God also. Yang diperintahkan padamu sekarang kita bertobat, benar gak? They, they, yeah, they said that what has commanded to you now will repent. Keren gak? Yang diperintahkan padamu. Salah gak perintah Tuhan? They they quoted the word of God. 
Terus sudah bertobat. Oh, dulu saya salah. Sekarang saya bertobat. So, and then repent. Oh, I was wrong, but now I repent. Keren ya? Isn't that cool that they use the word of God? Kenapa gak, 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 ber, kenapa gagal? But why did it still fail? Gak bergantung sama kasih Tuhan. Because they did not depend on the love of God. Bergantung sama ayat. They depended on verses. Semua agamawi bergantung sama ayat. All religious men, they rely on verses. And then bergantung sama pengobatan diri sendiri, kemampuan diri sendiri. And they relied on their own self-repentance. Saya kasih tahu, 100% gagal. But I tell you, it's 100% failed. Kenapa? Manusia tidak bisa melakukan ayat. Because mankind, people, we cannot, um, we cannot fulfill the verses. Jangan kaget kalau manusia gagal. Semua orang gagal. Do not be surprised when mankind fail. Everyone okay. fails. Yang bisa melakukan hanya Kristus dalammu. The only one that can fulfill it is Christ that is in you. Paulus yang sudah percaya pun. Paul that I do not uh, believe. Yang disebut Rasul. That was called prophet. Yang sudah umur dua. Um, that was. Oh, sudah umurnya tua. Oh, that was already an old, a senior. Dia mengaku di Roma saya melakukan sesuatu yang saya tidak ingin lakukan. He, he admitted that he he had to do things that he did not want to do. Betul ya. Dia berkata, Paulus bilang, karena kita tidak tahu bagaimana seharusnya kita berdoa. Paul said that because we do not know how we should pray. Yang ketiga. Do you understand? Agama itu apa? Do you understand what religious? Manusia ingin menjalankan ayat dengan kekuatan sendiri. Religious men are people that wants to uh, fulfill the verses of the word of God by their own self. Tapi yang Tuhan ingin adalah kita bergantung sama Dia. What God wants is for us to depend on Him. Bukan saya, bukan saya lagi yang hidup, tapi Kristus dalamku. No longer I that lives in me, but it's Christ. In Itu me. yang Tuhan. Tuhan, kamu hanya berdiri, berdiri teguh, teguh di situ, dah, jangan gerak. We just need to stand firm, just right there in God's love. Semua masalah hilang. And all of your problems will be Dan kamu akan dibawa ke tempat yang baru. And God will take you to new places. Ya, kadang-kadang tempat itu disebut ya tadi ya di situ di, di tempat yang baru itu tadi yang si uh, kita sudah baca itu disebutkan itu ada yang apa tuh gunung ya? Uh, ada Lebanon tuh apa? Ada gunung Lebanon. Ada lagi apa? Uh, padang gurun, benar nggak? It's mentioned here all the new places that we will face. It says the Lebanon or the desert or. You lihat nggak? Padang gurun disebut. Even the desert, the wilderness was mentioned. Ada kadang-kadang padang gurun. Sometimes maybe we enter a wilderness. Gak apa-apa padang gurun. It's okay when you Lewat, enter. Lewat, gitu loh. Just go through it. Ya, kadang-kadang ada lagi gunung. And sometimes a hill. Ada yang takut padang gurun. Ada yang takut gunung tinggi. Saya gak bisa naik. Gak apa-apa, bisa. Gitu loh. Maybe you're fearful of the hill. You say, oh, it's tall. It's a high hill. I cannot go. Yes, you can. Tahu gak? Ada lagi sungai. And then, sungai gede lagi, Efrat. And it's also mentioned um, the river. Yeah, gak apa-apa. Tuh tetap tetap kerajaan surga. It's okay. It's still the kingdom of heaven. Ada lagi tanah orang Het. It says here the land of the Hades. Yeah, yeah. Sampai ke laut besar di sebelah mata. Jadi sampai ke laut besar, sampai sana. Tanah yang baru yang tanah orang gitu loh. Tanah yang apa? Ada orangnya orang Het. Gak apa-apa. Kamu tuh akan tetap diberkatimu. Even as far as the Great Sea, it's okay. God is still with you. Karena semuanya itu menjadi milikmu. Because all of them will become yours. For the kingdom of heaven. Terbasuk pada guru. Including wilderness. Terbasuk lembah kelapan. Even the valley of. Tidak apa-apa. Uh, it's okay. Jangan takut. Do not be afraid. Kamu lewat dan kamu lihat. Ya, sudah lewat. You will pass it and then you see. Oh, I passed it. Siapa di sini yang dulu sekolah tidak pernah ujian? Who in here goes to school but never takes the test? Siapa yang di sini yang suka ujian? Who here likes exams? Isa, suka ujian. <laughs> Kamu kadang orang suka ujian gak? Sudah gak? Mau ujian? Yee, yeah, mau ujian gitu. Do you like exams? Any of you excited when you have to do exams? Kalau cuma saya, mas saya, kita yee, yeah, udah selesai. Udah selesai ujian, baru ah, happy. Bener gak? Kalau well, ujian, aduh, stress. Gitu kan? We're all excited after the exam um, is finished, not during the exam. Bener gak? Isn't that right? Tapi itu lah, kamu udah lewat, nah happy gak? But after you went through it, you're actually happy? Kamu dulu sudah lewat, happy gak? Oh, when you've passed it, um, aren't you happy? Itulah kerajaan surga tuh, buat kamu. That's... Kamu happy gak? Dan pun lagi, aduh, 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 kita kan mesti belajar. Tapi aku udah lewat, happy gak? It's the kingdom of heaven for you. After you pass it, won't you be happy? Siapa yang, yang pernah lomba? 
Kamu mau lomba nyanyi, mau lomba tenis, mau apa? Kamu dulu mesti berjuang. And you have you taken a competition before? When you have to prepare for competition, you have to really practice. Ya, tapi setelah lewat, happy nggak? But after it's finished, aren't you happy? Nanti nggak? Itulah kerajaan suka supaya kamu. Kalau nggak pernah berlomba, pada kamu bisa jadi juara. That's the kingdom of heaven. If you never compete, then how can you become the winner? Nanti nggak? Kalau kamu nggak ketemu, apa? Misalnya main bulu tangkis kayak apa? Pemain yang kuat, mana kamu tahu kamu bisa jago apa? If you're, let's say you're playing badminton, but you never compete against a strong player, how will you know how strong you are? Itu semua di dalammu udah diberikan. Kamu hanya berdiri tepuk. Pakai dan. Everything's already inside of you. You just need to stand firm. Jangan takut apapun jika masalah, ya. And fear not when you're facing anything. Karena yang karunia yang keenam adalah karunia memimpin dan Tuhan pertama memimpin kamu. Because the sixth gift is the gift of leading, and the first thing that God does is He leads you. Di bawah di dunia yang baru kayak begini. He leads you to a new life. Lebah kekelaman, kayaknya serem. The valley of death, it seems scary. Tapi setelah lewat, bilang, ih, saya udah lewat. <laughs> Ternyata, gak apa-apa, gitu tuh. Bangga, bener gak? But Bro. after you pass it, then you say, oh, I've already passed the valley of shadow of death. It's okay. Gak apa-apa semuanya. Begitu loh. It's okay, everything's ya, okay. Takut. Ada musuh yang nyeremin, ah. Gitu aja. <laughs> There's a scary enemy that you don't for, just forget about it. Okay. Jangan terintimida- terintimidasi ya sama orang. Don't become intimidated by people. Okay. Saya kasih tahu ya, orang semuanya kecil. I tell you that all people are small. Dan jangan pikir ada orang yang uh, bisa kayak luar biasa. Don't think that there's a person that's very great. Yang luar biasa cuma Tuhan deh, saya bilangin. The only great uh, person is only God. Ya, jadi hanya Tuhan yang berhasil. Hanya kuatkan dan tekunkan hatimu melalui kekuatan dari Tuhan. Just only be strong and be courageous, not by your own strength, but by His strength. Ya, nih lihat ya, itu di perjanjian lama ya, di perjanjian baru Tuhan bilang apa? Now that's that was in the Old Testament. What did God say in the New Testament? Ya, Yohanes 16 ayat 32. Lihat saatnya datang, bahkan sudah datang bahwa kamu dicerai berikan masing-masing ke tempatnya sendiri. Dan kamu meninggalkan aku seorang diri, namun aku tidak seorang diri, sebab Bapa menyertai aku. Tuhan tidak takut. Verse 32, so, Behold, an hour is coming and has already come for you to be scattered, each to his own home, and to leave me alone, and yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. Ya, yeah. Bapa di surga setia. Father God is faithful. Ayat 33, Semua itu dikutakan padamu supaya kamu beroleh damai sejahtera dalam aku, dalam dunia, Kamu menderita pengayaan, tapi kuatkanlah hatimu, aku telah mengalahkan dunia. These things I have spoken to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage, I have overcome the world. Jadi ya, itu yang Tuhan bilang. Kamu bergantung sama kasih Tuhan, nanti ada kayak begini hidup baru, atau pengayaan, atau apa. Udah, tenang-tenang aja. Kamu bergantung sama kasih Tuhan. Tuhan mengalahkan semuanya. God's message is that just depend on God's love, and then if you say, "Oh, there'll be tribulations, there'll be this and that," no, don't worry. Just uh, depend on God's love. Yang Tuhan berkata adalah, "Aku, Yesus, telah mengalahkan dunia." What He says is that I, Jesus, have overcome the world. Ya, sabar, tenang aja. Yesus bilang, "Aku telah mengalahkan dunia." Beres. Beres, gitu loh, kasarnya begitu. Just be calm, be still. I have overcome the world. It's all taken care of. That's what he's saying. Ya, itu yang Tuhan lakukan. That's what God has done. Ya, akhirnya di kitab wahyu, apa yang Tuhan lakukan. And finally, in the book of Revelation, what has God done? Ya, semua binatang itu dihilangkan sama Tuhan. All of those four beasts, God has um, made it all disappear. Wahyu 20 ayat 10. Dan iblis, satu ya, yang menyesatkan mereka dilemparkan ke dalam lautan api dan belerang, yaitu tempat binatang dan nabi palsu. Binatang itu adalah gamawi, nabi palsu, nabi palsu. Dan mereka disisa siang malam sampai selama-lamanya. Revelation 20 verse 10. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet, the beast um, are the religious people, and the false prophet are also, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Ya, yeah. Dan di Wahyu 20 ayat 14, lalu maut dan kerajaan maut itu dilemparkan dalam kelautan api, itulah kematian yang kedua lautan api. Dan setiap orang yang tidak ditemukan namanya, tertulis di dalam kitab kehidupan, ia dilemparkan ke dalam lautan api itu. Verse 14, 
Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death and the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Jadi semua yang mengintimidasi menakutkan kita. So everything that intimidates us or is uh, scary. Iblis. The devil. Ya, yeah. maut dan kerajaan maut. Death and Hades. Itu adalah binatang keempat di, 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 di Daniel. And those are the beasts that was um, mentioned in Daniel. Ya, tapi palsu di binatang kedua. The uh, false prophet it was the second beast. Binatang lain itu binatang agamawi itu binatang ketiga. And other beasts or religious people. Dan orang yang menolak Tuhan. And people that. Diri sendiri. And people that rejected God uh, selves. Itu binatang pertama. That's the first beast. Semuanya Tuhan hilangkan. All of them God has um, overcome. Kenapa? Why? Karena Tuhan tidak ingin kita ada ketakutan. Because God doesn't want us to have fear. Supaya tidak ada intimidasi lagi dalam hidup. So there will be no intimidations in our life. Ya, supaya lepas. So become free. Termasuk kamu dulu pernah gagal. Even if you have once failed. Dan itu mungkin mengintimidasimu. And maybe it intimidates you. Enggak. But no. Jangan takut. Do not fear. Kalau kamu nggak pernah gagal. If you have never failed. Tuhan nggak perlu datang kemari. God does not need to come. Kalau kamu pernah gagal. But if you have failed. Atau temanmu gagal. Or if your friend failed. Tidak apa-apa. It's okay. Ada dia. There is dia him. pernah gagal. That never fails. Itu kendak Tuhan. Kuatkan, tegakkan hati. That's God's will. Uh, be strong and courageous. Jangan kayak orang Israel. Don't be like the Israelites. Lihat dirinya kayak belalang. They see themselves like grasshoppers. Berat dirinya gagal. They see themselves as failures. Iya betul, kamu bisa gagal. It's true. Dan kamu sudah gagal. It's true that you have failed and you can fail. Nah, tapi pada ada Tuhan. But the, there's God. Dan nah, Tuhan bilang hanya kuatkan, teguhkan hatimu. And God says, be strong and courageous. Bukan tanganmu, bukan kakimu, teguhkan hatimu. Coba di sini. It's not um, your heart, uh, it's not your leg or your hand, but your heart, let your heart be strong. Hanya menerima kasih Tuhan. Just by receiving God's love. Hanya satu yang bisa menghambat kasih Tuhan. Only one can prevent God's love. Jika kau menolak. That is if you reject Him. Kalau kau menerima, tidak ada yang bisa menyentuh. If you accept His love, nothing can stop. Dan semua kegagalan, kesalahan yang menakutkan kamu. Lenyap semua sama dia. And all of your failures, um, your failings that have um, that fears you, it will all be vanished. Itulah kendak dia di dalam kerajaan surga. That is God's plan, God's will in the kingdom of heaven. Kerajaan surga itu bukan hanya harta. The kingdom of heaven is not just speaking about treasure. Tapi itu ada sukses tangga. But then there's uh, there's successes in it. Ada keberuntungan. There's luck and successes. Ada sukacita. There's joy. Ada kemenangan meskipun kamu nggak perang. There's victory even if you're not the one fighting. Ada keberhasilan meskipun kamu gagal. There's successes even when you fail. Kamu tahu Do you know? Ada tempat yang baru di mana kamu menang meskipun kamu tempat itu baru. There's a new place where you have won the victory even though it's a new place for you. Ada tempat yang kamu lebih tinggi meskipun kamu tadi dari bawah. There's a place that is higher even though you're from the bottom. Tahu nggak di kerajaan surga itu namanya apa? Tempat uh, orang itu? Do you know what that called in the kingdom of heaven? Di Bible dikatakan Yohanes pembaptis adalah yang terbesar di perjanjian lama. The Bible says that John the Baptist is the greatest from the Old Testament. Tetapi yang di dalam kerajaan surga yang paling kecil di kerajaan surga lebih besar dari Yohanes Pembaptis. But then God says that the smallest, the littlest of all in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John the Baptist. Artinya tahu nggak apa? Do you know what that means? Yang paling kecil di kerajaan surga. The smallest in the kingdom of heaven. Gak ada, semuanya besar, mana? There's none. All of us is great. Karena Yohanes Pembaptis yang paling besar pun gak ada papanya, jadi semuanya di kerajaan surga besar. Because John the Baptist that is Great is still smaller than us, which is like we are great. Do you understand that? Semua di tempat kita, kamu akan jadi besar. Tempat kita belum tahu aja. Each and every one of us will become great. We just don't know it yet. You tahu nggak? Do you know? Paulus yang paling banyak, yang paling jahat pun menjadi apostle. Paul, that was uh, evil back then when he was Saul, he became an apostle. Yang tidak bisa mengasihi orang bukan Yahudi. Menjadi apostle 
untuk bukan orang Yahudi. When he couldn't love uh, the non-Jewish, the Gentiles, he became apostle. Ya, Yohanes yang yang hanya anak tu, apa tukang ikan. John that was nelayan. That was just the son of a fisherman. Menjadi yang paling dekat dengan Tuhan. He became the closest to God. Ya penulis Alkitab. Came a writer of the Yang menulis Bible. Tuhan adalah kasih. He was the one that wrote that God is love. Yang tadinya disebut anak halilita, tukang parah. Yohanes. It was just said that he was just a son, uh, but he's the one that showed God his love. Abraham yang gagal, gak punya anak dan gak bisa percaya. Abraham that failed, he could not have a child, and he Menjadi didn't believe. Jadi bapa orang beriman bagi segala bangsa. He became the father of faith for all nations. Daud yang begitu kecilnya atau bagaimana sampai bapanya lupa punya anak namanya Daud. David who was so small that even his father forget that uh, he had a son called David. Menjadi raja Israel dan menjadi dan dari dia keturunannya adalah Yesus. He became the king of Israel and out of his descendants um, Jesus was born. Yang hebat. Maria pernah preaching. Maria. Just like what uh, Mar Mar Maria has preached. Even Mary. Yeah. Yang yeah. yeah. Apa dipandang orang berdosa oleh Farisi? That was looked as a sinner from the um, Pharisees. Tetapi dicatat di Alkitab. But she was mentioned in the Bible. Dia yang pertama mendeklarasikan Tuhan sudah bangkit. She was the first to declare that God has risen. Menjad, mendeklarasikan Tuhan sudah bangkit kepada seluruh murid, termasuk Yohanes. She was the one that declared that God has risen to all of the disciples, even John. Dan karena itu Maria disebut, Maria disebut. Rasul dari Rasul. Because of that, Mary was called an apostle from apostle. Itu semua kayak begitu. It was all like that. Yusuf. Joseph. Yang ngadepin kakak-kakaknya yang kurubutin dia. That to face all his brothers that were kurubutin. Sepuluh kakak laki kurubutin satu anak. Ten of his older brothers. Dan dia gak bisa lawan. And he couldn't um, fight them. Tapi Tuhan angkat menjadi nomor satu di di Mesir. But then God lifted him up to become the number one person in Egypt. You know, di dalam kerajaan surga, you nggak ada yang kecil. Do you know that in the kingdom of heaven, there's no one Semua punya bidat berbeda. Everyone has their own strength differently. Dan you semua know? besar. And everyone is great. Gak bisa kecil. You cannot become small. Kalau nggak Yesus gagal. If not, then Jesus has failed. Mana bisa Yesus gagal? And how? Dia. Kamu adalah anak dari Bapa. Mana bisa kamu kecil? You are the son of Father God. You cannot become small. Yang kamu tidak Tuhan minta adalah jangan tolak. What God asks of you is just do not reject Him. Hanya kuatkan dan teguhkanlah hatimu. But only be strong and courageous. Di dalam kasihnya. In His love. Tak ada macam-macam. There is nothing else. Hanya terima, teguh, berhenti di situ. Jangan goyang ke kiri ke kanan. Just accept and stand firm. Semuanya kau diberikan. And everything else is given. Sebesar kamu menerima. Just as big as you are willing to receive. Kalau kamu mau menerima banyak sekali, mak ambil semuanya. If you want to take as much as possible, then go ahead, receive it all. Tergantung dari kamu. It just depends on you. Yang Tuhan berikan semuanya. What God wants to give is all. Dari padang gurun sampai gunung. Sampai sungai, sampai laut. From the wilderness to the mountains to the rivers to the sea. Semua buat kamu. Everything is for you. Berapa besar kamu menerima? But just how big are you willing to receive? Berapa besar kamu menerima kasih? How big are you willing to receive His love? Kasih yang cukup besar. His love is so great. Okay. Dan kita hanya itu dari Tuhan. Kau akan jadi orang besar. Jangan takut. We're going to receive His great love. Jangan mikir lagi gagal dalam. Don't do not be afraid. Jangan mikir apa. Don't don't think about your failures. Jangan pikir kamu belalang. Don't think that you're like a grasshopper. Ya, kamu adalah anak Tuhan di kerajaan surga yang besar. You are the son of God, of Father God, in the kingdom of heaven. Karena kasih Tuhan besar. Because God's love is great. Amen. Mari kita berdoa. Let us pray. Bapa di surga ya Tuhan. Father God in heaven. Kami mengucap syukur ya Tuhan karena kami memiliki Engkau. We are grateful because we have you. Kami diberkati kalau engkau. 
And we are blessed because of you. Karena kau adalah Tuhan yang besar, kau memberkati kami dengan besar. Because you are a great God, you bless us so great. Terima kasih Yesus. Thank you Jesus. Kau mengasihi kami semua. You bless us all. Dan kau yang menguatkan kami. And you are the one that strengthens us. Kau yang menyatakan dirimu. You are the one that shows yourself. Kasih Tuhan. Your love. Dalam nama Tuhan.